I don't want them to worry about that there's not going to be home or there's not going to be food. We aren't properly taking care of our family. You're about to be over the edge. <sighs> so it feels like you've pissed it away. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? You we have. have. My name is Laura, and I do bookkeeping and accounting software consulting. My name is Craig. I work in sales in the sign industry. I can't say there's anything about him spending money that drives me nuts, because most of the money we spend together. Five years ago, I had one credit card had a $5,000 balance on it. Neither one of us says no to the other one. With Laura becoming interested in the motorcycling and stuff, we've spent a bit of money equipping her over motorcycling. I bought a leather jacket, I bought a helmet, I bought a pair of gloves. <laughs> I wasn't buying anything that day, we are out for a Sunday ride, so that's impulse buy. I have no money, I'm scrambling to manage to make ends meet every month. Whenever there's a shortfall, I'm the one who has to come up with it. It's really easy for me to pick up the phone and say, hey, listen, I need some work, and, and I find it. Every month it gets a little bit worse, every year the debt keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's going to take no time at all before I'm going to have dire consequences. I have teenage boys, Craig's son's 15, my son's 15, and a 12-year-old. Our grocery bills are huge, heating out's expensive. I definitely see a risk to my marriage. I mean, we're a fresh new marriage and there's a fear that this could be a last chance. The financial thing about Craig that drives me the most nuts is his house. It's an emotional thing for him. It's his dream house, and he just won't get rid of it. He's got a ton of equity in that house. It's probably our main issue if we do fight. Worst case scenario in our relationship is I become annoyed enough with Craig all of the time that our relationship falls apart. There's been a few times that I've thought that Laura might wash her hands of it. I'm hoping Gail can tell us what we need to do. And probably, I guess, getting Laura and I together on the same game plan. This month, I'll help this couple move from red to black. I've been solving money problems for over 20 years, tackling everything from high finance to low income. I help people understand money and debt, which is still a huge mystery for most folks. And it's the number one reason couples split up. So now, I'm making house calls. After falling in love four years ago, Laura and Craig have been on a spending spree. Now, even with a combined income of $150,000, they're struggling to make ends meet. More bikes. Four, five, and bicycles galore. And barbecues. And a hot tub. Their debt is sending them to hell in a handbasket. Good thing they've got lots of ways to get there. Another bike. It was a sunroom, and they've turned it into a garage. So between you, you're making $150,000 a year. That's not enough? <laughs> it should be. You guys are still having a lot of fun. You're still on your honeymoon. Yeah, to some extent. You know, you're playing a lot together, but you're not resolving issues together. Your worst nightmares will come true if we do not solve this problem. Spending gone bonkers. <laughs> this is a monthly average over six months. Just look at this for a minute. Anything you want, you go and you buy yourself. Wow. Almost $700 a month on restaurants. And you're spending almost $900 a month in cash, which I can't track at all. Do you have a sense that you have no self-control? <laughs> as far as spending goes, yep. So if you're spending over five thousand dollars every month on non-essentials that's half your income gone bye-bye mm -hmm. you know that's done okay so like this isn't having the kind of impact on you that i would like it to have but i'm going to oh, guarantee it's... that the next one will <laughs> that's your debt and you're delusional about it how much do you want the cars they're leases are you required to pay them out Yes. Okay, so they are still debt. What's owing on the cars? It's about $60,000 for the two vehicles. $60,000 for the two vehicles. Now you owe $150,000.
That's a lot of money. Do you think it's reasonable to take seven years to pay for a toy and pay $7,300 in interest? I think in terms of monthly payments. When you talk about the motorcycle, I looked at, can we manage $300 a month? Mm -hmm. But you can't manage $300 a month. No, I know. That's delusional. Now, I'd like you to look at some of these interest rates. What does that say? 25.99. And that one? 23.5. And that one? 28.8. And that one? 28.8. Not a single credit card here is under 18%. That's lunacy. Your monthly interest cost on your existing debt is almost $1,200. Not including the cars, not including your mortgage, just on your consumer debt. What do you think? It's crazy to have allowed that to carry on like that. Between the debt that you're paying and the spending, every month you're spending $5,100 you haven't made yet. And if you keep it up in five years, you're going to be a million dollars in debt. My son came into the room afterwards and he goes, wow, mom, that's, you know, because he was listening. And that's what made me start to cry. I take care of my kids and I don't want them to be afraid. Are you prepared to do anything I ask to get out of this hole? Yeah, I promise. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I guess I have possessions that I'm nervous about potentially losing emotional or... Emotional attachments. Uh, yeah, too. emotional attachments. I ask you again, Craig. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to give you three challenges to do. You do the challenges, to my satisfaction, I'll give you up to $5,000 to help you pay off this debt. Mm -hmm. You don't do the challenges, you don't get the money. One of the things you're gonna have to learn to do is live on cash. Go get me your credit cards and your debit cards. They're mine. Coming up, Laura and Craig's marriage faces its first big challenge. I think you feel like you're being bullied into this. I'm done with this conversation. Money, 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 money. Laura and Craig may feel like they were born to be wild. Go! But with three teenagers and a new marriage, they have lots of responsibilities. Do we have any money? There's an awful lot of red on this screen. We aren't properly taking care of our family. Every month you're spending $5,100 you haven't made yet. I feel a lot of pressure and a lot of stress because I feel like it's always up to me. They fight about the bills and about the dream house Craig bought before he met Laura. And where do we go from here? To get them on the road to financial freedom, they'll have to follow my rules. For the next month, this couple will learn to live on a strict cash budget. No more credit cards. They'll complete weekly challenges to tackle their money and relationship issues. And if they're willing to change, I'll reward them with thousands of dollars. No changes, no money. This has been your downfall. I'm very popular in the financial services sector. <laughs> Somehow I don't think it's something you put on cake. <laughs> that will harden to concrete. And so now you're going to be living on my budget. You were spending about $7,000 a month, and now you'll be spending about $3,000 a month. And so you will have $250 a week for food, but it won't go very far if you spend it in a restaurant and you'll have $112 for transportation, $52 for entertainment, $25 for clothing and gifts, and $55 for other. And this includes allowance, dog food, that's other. But we have a problem. To get that debt paid off, I have to jack your debt repayment up to $4,600 a month. You just don't make enough money. You need to come up with assets to pay down that debt. Completely or partially, $92,000 worth of debt. Do you have assets that would balance it off? You're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You're trying to hold back. Yeah, I understand. Uh, give me a hug. I'm sorry, this is so hard. We made up that list of things we could sell, and we discussed that. And what we're selling is not stuff. We're selling our life. I mean, I realize bikes and cars and stuff like that are just tangibles. But 
You know, it's stuff that I've accumulated over over years. And then we started talking about the property that's in Ottawa. So it, yeah, it's a little tense. I think you feel like you're being bullied into getting rid of a property that all along you thought has been a good idea and all along you've had an emotional attachment to. It always made me feel good that I was a property owner and investor and have something that has created a decent equity. And that's all coming to an end because of the, the spending habits that we've had over such a short period of time. Well, there's a bit of resentment. I mean, our lifestyle is a lifestyle we both lived. It's kind of painful. So have you made a decision about what you're going to do about the debt? Well, I think unless you have a better suggestion for us, I, I'm committed to the idea of selling the house in Ottawa. OK. The, but how are you feeling about selling the house now? You know, I saved for that house for about 10 years. I've dealt with that house for another almost 10 years afterwards. Yes. And now, because of our silly spending habits, yes. it's all for nothing. So it feels like you've pissed it away. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? You have. have. That's exactly what you've done. Can you see having an asset that generates perhaps 5 or 6 or 7% return versus having a liability that costs you 18 or 20 or 28% makes no sense? Absolutely. I see that now. OK. Recognizing that relationship is really important so that you can start moving forward. I'm going to give you a relationship rescue challenge this week. <laughs> what? I'm worried I'm going to have to jump out of a plane or something. <laughs> it's funny that you should say that. Oh, God. I don't like this going upside down thing. Oh! Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. The bills are in for Lauren Craig's extended honeymoon. That's your debt, and you're delusional about it. Delusional, false belief or impression. This is a symptom or form of a mental disorder. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> After my first challenge, Craig has reluctantly accepted that he must sell his country house to pay down their massive debt. I'm really looking forward to it being a, a breath of fresh air at the end, not having all that debt. To help them move forward after a tense first week, I've designed a relationship rescue challenge seven stories in the air. I'm going to die. <laughs> By completing all their challenges, they could earn up to $5,000 to help them pay down their debt. So you notice we're at a cliff, and you're going to wear these blindfolds, and we're going to climb and <laughs> repel today. We're going to wear <laughs> blindfolds? Yeah, you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> Good communication and absolute trust will be essential for the blindfolded climber to make it down the cliff. Walk back and about one more foot. Mm -hmm. Good. Keep talking to each other, guys. Ow. All right. You got to take your feet over. Take your foot down. Take your foot down. I can't oh. get my foot down. It's stuck. Put yeah. your foot to your right if you can. I don't like this going upside down thing, guys. You got to get your feet down. You got to push. Hang on. That's it. There That's you all go. you needed to do. Keep talking to her. How you doing? I'm good, honey. You're about to be out of my sight, so yell if you want speed or anything like that. I'm firmly in a tree here. What do you need? I'm OK, but I don't know where the ground is. Ugh. All right, you there? Oh, I think that's bottom. My legs are shaking now. <laughs> but I think my legs are shaking more nervousness of my own turn, so. Walk towards me. So I step. You slide it back. You're about to be over the edge. You're okay. Try and toe off with your right foot. There you go. Make your spread your feet further apart and just keep walking them down backwards. Is the speed okay? Yeah, my feet are actually on a bit of a ledge. Just keep stepping your feet back. You're almost off that little ledge you're on. Are you there yet? I don't know if I'm on ground or not. Laura did phenomenally. I listened to her the whole way down, and she managed to give me good advice all the way, so I was very comfortable. He's very supportive, and if anything, it's me that needs to be more encouraging and supportive. She gives good instructions, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Wow. Was it fun? Yeah, it was. Once I got past that panic, panic and 
wasn't real comfortable with being blindfolded. So that was the biggest thing was because having to rely on Craig to tell me what to do. So you got the point. Yeah. Trust, communication. Yeah. And how is it living on the jars? You know, it, it does stop us from going out and spending money at restaurants and things like that. I notice you have money left over. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? How is it possible for me to cut your budget that much and still have money left over? Because now we're paying attention to where we're spending money. Well, there you go. For now, until we get ourselves straightened out, that's a good budget. Okay. The thing we haven't dealt with yet is the fact that you are saving nothing. And in saving nothing, you're making no preparation for retirement. The rule of thumb for how much you will need in retirement is about 70% of the money you're making while you're still working. So you guys have a income right now of about $10,000 a month, which means you'll need about $7,000 a month in retirement. You need to have about $600,000 saved. So I am having the money you get this week. The part I'm trying to bring home is what it'll be like to live on next to no money if you don't get busy saving right now. The exercise is pointless with a fridge full of food, so I'm taking that away too. Here's the thing, when you're retired, you're not gonna have the boys. So they can eat this food, you have to live on your new budget. And you have other categories that are also gonna be half. Your every transportation, it's your entertainment, it's everything. Finding new ways to save money, coming up. Money, 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 money. Bitch and bikes are just two of the toys that Laura and Craig bought with credit. Now their credit is maxed out, putting their new family at risk. You know I don't want them to worry about that there's not going to be a home or there's not going to be food. Craig has had to put his dream house on the market to help pay down the $92,000 in consumer debt. These two are racked up in only four years. You know, you're playing a lot together but you're not resolving issues together. Laura had to take a blind leap of faith and start trusting her new husband for the first time. Put your foot to your right if you can. For their final challenge, I've cut their cash in half to give them a taste of what life will be like if they don't start saving for retirement pronto. If they complete all of my challenges, I'll give them up to $5,000 to help pay down their debt. Craig was quick to find ways to cut corners. If we end up retiring with just a pensioner's income, a lot of our lifestyle goes away, and I think that's a lot of who we are as a couple. There's always the produce that's a little bit older. I've always joked that it was like old people food. I don't think it would be any quality of life at all. 50? That's a lot of money for grapes. I mean, it already was kind of tough, so it's going to get really tight. It's OK, you don't get magazines, I don't get meat. You got meat. Meat with coupons, but you got meat. It's 24 dollars can I get a receipt for that too, please? What happened to you? I, uh, I cut my hair. <laughs> With the dog clippers? Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was free. How did the food part of it go? You know, we were eating what we thought we could afford as opposed to what we would actually choose to eat. Yes. We're definitely going to stay friends with our kids so that they can invite us over to dinner. <laughs> Better yet, why don't we start saving some money so we don't have to live like poor people when we retire? How about that? That's Sounds good. Idea. Oh, okay, good. Well, you know what? You can have your food back. Now Thank you. you. Can get to your food. I'm hungry. Can I go now? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you learn this month? Lots of stuff. Like? Um, well, definitely to pay attention to where our money's going. Good. Um, communicate with each other on where we're spending and what we're doing and even what we want. Such a wide <laughs> variety of stuff, you know. And you know, the thing is, you can have it. Have you sold the house yet? The current tenants are in talking to a broker trying to buy it as we speak, so. Good for you. Well, when I got here, you were overspending by $5,100 each and every month. And you were headed towards a million dollars worth of debt. But you also had an asset that would wipe that consumer debt out. What I have done is eliminated the debt payment, which was choking you, and redistributed the money through your budget. You have $800 a month set aside for retirement planning. And if you do that for the next 20 years, you'll have over $600,000. I 
be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> you get to have a life. It's all there. You have each other's back now. Take full advantage of it and use the other guy. I have to be more involved in the finances. I have to pay closer attention. I have to be more of a partner with Laura. We do okay with the money end of it. Um, it's just making sure that that money's spent wisely. So I think you've done pretty well too. So I have for you $5,000. Well. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you very much. Can you hold that so I don't go shopping? Yeah, <laughs> very good idea. But I have something else for you. Because you can't keep a good motorcycle mama down, I have for you a weekend riding excursion. Oh, cool. Wow. Enjoy the trip. I can see the end of the tunnel, whereas before Gail came, the end of the tunnel was me trying to figure out some way to extricate myself and still be able to take care of my kids because our debt was overwhelming to our relationship. No more reality <laughs> television for you. <laughs>